So we are in Dublin, we're at Fuse 24. I'm here with Paco Pignatelli, who is head of Open RAN at Vodafone. Paco, great to see you again. Thanks yeah, very great, much for joining us. Great to see us. you again. I know you've had a very full day, so thanks for squeezing us in. Maybe you can just start by just giving us an open, uh, an, an update on where Vodafone is with its uh, Open RAN rollouts and what you are learning now from these, the different markets where, you, where you've rolled out Open RAN. Well, it's, it's a journey. I think uh, we are now at a, a critical moment. It's been great to roll out uh, uh, Open RAN in uh, Vodafone UK. Uh, our performance is good. Uh, we are matching or exceeding uh, some of the KPIs that, that we had in the, in the past. Uh, so uh, we are preparing for the next phase of uh, you know, rollout and uh, get, getting uh, automation on the ground. We, that now most of the focus uh, gets into that part after uh, we got the radio right. Uh, also, uh, same thing in, uh, in our network in Romania, uh, where we also introduced uh, uh, 2G as a, as a, as a technology. And, uh, uh, KPI-wise, again, uh, looking good uh, and okay. making progress, and uh, we, we are preparing for the next phase uh, uh, for the other markets. Okay. Any surprises from uh, what you've seen so far in terms of the, those KPIs and the feedback and the performance? No. I, I, well, I think, uh, obviously, uh, uh, we've been building on uh, uh, the shoulders of giants, uh, uh, our, our selection of suppliers, uh, they, they are already uh, deploying uh, in other markets in a big way. Uh, yeah. So Samsung, Wind River, Dell, so they are all very capable companies. Um, uh, we also obviously had to uh, get together, start managing the process on how uh, you uh, make you know, the final product live and how you sort out uh, problems. But, but um, I think we came a long way and, uh, and uh, in that sense it's uh, it's a success story so far. So no, no, no I, would, I would not say surprises. We obviously had problems. You don't have some issues, uh, you know, going fast enough. So, right. Um, but I think uh, I'm, I'm very positive about uh, where we are today. Okay. Now, obviously, there's quite a bit of buzz and excitement of, around the, the, the long trail plan uh, to, to do the major RFQ uh, at Vodafone. Um, and that's across your entire RAN landscape, isn't it? Where are you in that process? Um, we are not too far from uh, closing. Okay. Uh, so uh, potentially days or weeks. I don't think it will take too much more okay. uh, time. But um, yeah, it's definitely uh, uh, not too much deviation from the initial plan, which uh, I'm very happy about. I think uh, we have seen uh, you know, good proposals from the ecosystem. It's great to see that, you know, it's a healthy uh, conversation, healthy support around what we want to do. In that sense, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's well done for all suppliers and uh, I, I hope we can close and announce uh, pretty soon. Okay. Um, now, it, it seems uh, in the market in general, but also here at this event, that there are uh, more conversations uh, around the, the, the management uh, layer of, uh, of Open RAN and of RAN in general, uh, but particularly around uh, the uh, SMO uh, and the RAN Intelligent Controller uh, platforms, the, the RICs. Where is Vodafone in terms of um, looking at that, maybe testing, trialing, or if, sort of you know, examining what is possible? Yeah. I mean, one interesting thought when you look at Open RAN is uh, you know, how much you need to deliver in a new technology uh, compared to, you know, what's been uh, happening in the industry for decades, you know? so you need to have, you know, 2G, 3G or 4G, 5G together developing very such a short time, uh, time frame, no? so we have seen uh, a, a lot of the initial focus on getting that right, even, you know, integrations with Massive MIMO, all those things, so those, those are, are done pretty much, uh, so right now um, we I would say already the last few months we we turn our, our head into automation. Um, so we've been testing solutions from various suppliers in the lab. Now we're doing that in the field. So we are reassessing our requirements, going back to the suppliers. Okay. And I think in the next uh, 12 months, more or less, uh, most of the focus will be on the automation you need for testing, the automation you need for uh, deployment, and also uh, operations to sort 
uh, sort out problems. Um, and uh, we, we don't want to forget also the uh, one of the big hopes uh, from Open Run from the beginning, which is uh, applications. Uh, the degree of programmability that you have, you know, we, we are doing all this not just to have uh, a competitor to other options, but we want to build on top. So yeah. uh, we are now also turning more the focus into that area. Um, uh, to try, trying to capture the opportunity, uh, so I think that will come, will come next. But I think we need to see first, uh, you know, uh, strong foundation. So um, more announcements from uh, various uh, operators, and then the, the ecosystem will continue to see that uh, this is the way to go. I think uh, more and more that we uh, look at the initial assumptions for Open Run, we are more convinced that uh, it's the right thing to do. Uh, Maybe the pace is slower than what we thought initially, but uh, you know what? This happens, I think, almost uh, with any of the big uh, technology introductions. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it's looking pro promising. But yeah, those areas are uh, the, the future ones to focus on. OK. And, and as we're here at Fuse, if I could just ask, you know, what or how important is the role of an organization like TIP in helping to, to push that forward? Because that's really all about collaboration, isn't it? I agree. You know, it's always been about collaboration. Uh, where do you need to collaborate? Uh, it's been changing in the last few years. Uh, but I think TIP is essential in terms of, uh, you know, playing a coordination role between the different operators when it comes to making things happen, making things uh, ready for, for deployment. So we still look uh, at TIP in that, in that way, um, you know, to help us uh, uh, have the right conversations, to help us uh, um, get the right processes, uh, develop the ecosystem and, and uh, ma make everything work like a good, uh, um, you know, orchestra, no? Uh, so, they, right. uh, so I think uh, uh, the role is important for that. Okay. Uh, and finally, you know, there's a lot of companies here you know, developing a, a lot of different technologies and systems and software to help with this shift to, to the next generation networks. From, from your perspective and from Vodafone's perspective, what do you need most from, from this community right now to, to take your company to the next level? Yeah, I think the key, the key word is uh, innovation. Uh, we are in an environment that is not easy at the moment. We, have, we still have a lot of pressure uh, to deliver uh, better results. We want to roll out more network, uh, but uh, all that is only possible when we uh, you know, get, get uh, more motivation to roll out. We need to have better, better hardware. I think hardware is more fundamental than, uh, than we think for, for the future. We need to uh, be able to uh, you know, have more power in our, in our radios, uh, have more bandwidth, uh, we need, uh, you know, the, the baseband to be uh, even more capable, more powerful. So it's all about, I think, the, the innovation overall, and particularly in the hardware space. It's good to start another another cycle, no, for everybody to get excited. I mean, we always we always wanted to do more. No? It's not just uh, uh, compare with uh, with traditional. So we need to prove that there can be a step change. Okay. And I think that would be the focus innovation. Yes. And and I guess this is why you've have the facility in Malaga where you're focused very much on the on the chip level uh, indeed, into indeed I mean if uh, I mean you can disaggregate uh, from outside uh, go into the hardware software uh, but ultimately uh, chips uh, play a very important role they they are essential in the overall cost they are essential also in performance particularly in the most complex scenarios so we want to uh, drive technology forward in that sense and, and also be able to uh, innovate, uh, bring new architectures, and, and it's, a, it's a essential piece, yeah. Malaga is very important for us. Okay, Paco, thanks very much for joining us today, giving us an update on what Vodafone is doing and where it's going, and uh, look forward to the results of the RFQ and, and talking to you in 2025. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me.